Welcome, welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review, our international branch of Ausfahrt TV. My name is Mr. Z and this is my format. If you haven't seen one of our reviews yet, please make sure to check the E at the logo on the uh, on the left side of the screen uh, because uh, there you will find an introduction video to our format which is useful because our format has some specialties well uh, for all the other guys i'm here and i'm standing next to the all new porsche 718 cayman Yes, we've already presented you the Boxster, uh, the 718 Boxster S, and now we decided to take the Cayman without the S, so with a um, less performant engine. Uh, however, the 718 is now a product branch or a product family by Porsche, so the Boxster and the Cayman who belong together anyway, they now have the same name 718. And the name origins from the legendary uh, Porsche 718 RSK from 1957, which was a successor of the icon i might say the icon the porsche 550 spider and uh, the porsche 718 rsk already uh, was uh, was made in lightweight it had a mid engine and it was standing for design as well as for four cylinder engines and that's exactly what the new generation of the 718 resembles as well by the way i'm in sweden today in malmö or rather next to the airport of malmö at the stuber Sturup Raceway, a little racetrack where we can drive the Cayman as well. But let's look back in history first. Um, in 1996, Porsche introduced the Porsche Boxster. They waited almost 10 years uh, until 2005 until they released a coupe version of the Roadster called Cayman. So the first product generation was introduced at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 2005. In 2012 uh, at the LA Motor Show they introduced the second product generation and the newest one, the third product generation, was introduced at the Auto China in Beijing. Um, Back in time, it was kind of funny because the Boxster was always cheaper than the Cayman. The convertible was um, less expensive than the coupe version, which you don't find at any other, other manufacturer. Now they changed this mistake and now the Cayman is a little bit uh, cheaper than the Boxster. By the way, the Boxster was built close to my hometown in Osnabrück for the first to product generation. Now the production moved to the main factory plant in Stuttgart, Suffenhausen. And uh, one more thing, the price tag between the Cayman and the Cayman S differs, at least in Germany, around about 12,500 euros. Well, I'm always trying to name a few competitors that you get an idea of the range we are in. Uh, here I would say, well, first of all, the biggest competitor is a Porsche Boxster itself, so Cayman versus Boxster. Then I see the uh, Audi TTRS, maybe the Nissan 370Z, and uh, maybe even the Alfa Romeo 4C. Usually I lift the hood and I touch the engine just for my pleasure. It's not possible right here, right now here because we got a mid engine and of course it's covered, it's closed. Otherwise it would be pretty loud in the inside. So it's not as exciting to just, you know, touch the carpet here. i rather tell you something about the engines. It's the same like with the Boxster. Um, we got two engines. First of all, a two liter engine, uh, four cylinder Boxster with 300 horses. That's 25 horses more than the previous model had, but two cylinders less. So we have a four cylinder now, no six cylinder anymore. Uh, on the other, well, maximum torque of uh, 380 newton meters by the way. On the other hand we got the Cayman S with a 2.5 liter four-cylinder boxer. 
And this one comes uh, with a maximum torque of 420 Newton meters. Uh, as you might know, with the current model, or the previous model rather, with the second product generation, we had the Cayman GTS as well and the Cayman GT4, which had much more power than just the Cayman S. And I expect those models to come in the next months as well. Okay, um, we got rear-wheel drive, of course, with the Cayman, and you can choose between a manual six-speed or the seven-speed PDK, the automatic transmission by Porsche. Well, anyway, here it is under the carpet, the heart of our Tesca, a two-liter four-cylinder boxer with 300 horses. It's good for maximum torque of 380 Newton meters, and you get them in a range between 1,950 and 4,500 RPM. Our test car is equipped with the uh, PDK, the dual clutch automatic transmission, a six, uh, seven speed. Allow me to give you the basic specs about our test car, the Porsche 718 Cayman with PDK and chrono package. It accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds and the top speed is reached at 275 kilometers per hour which equals 171 miles per hour. The gas tank of the 2016 Porsche 718 Cayman will take 54 liters or 14.3 US gallons. Porsche gives a fuel consumption figure of 6.9 liters for every 100 kilometers driven or 34.1 miles per US gallons which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 780 kilometers or 480 miles without stopping for fuel. CO2 emissions for the 2016 Porsche 718 Cayman should be 158 grams per kilometer, according to Porsche. The Porsche 718 Cayman has a length of 4.38 meters or 172 inches with a wheelbase of 2.48 meters or 98 inches. It is 1.3 meters high, so 51 inches, and it is 1.8 meters wide, so 71 inches, with a span of 2 meters or 79 inches from mirror tip to mirror tip. For the turning circle, you need at least 11 meters or 36.1 feet of free space. The curb weight comes in at 1,365 kilograms or 3,009 pounds. The, map, the maximum loaded weight is 1,685 kilograms or 3,715 pounds. In Germany, our test car would cost around about 85,830 euros. <laughs> Well, Porsche is not really having trim levels, they have models, you know, the Cayman is the Cayman and that's the trim level, while the Cayman S is the Cayman S and that's the trim level. So I can't really tell you anything about the trim levels. However, uh, Porsche is following the new trend to make cars look wider, more sporty, more aggressive, you know. I'm a little bit tired of this. Uh, however, they say that this part down here is supposed to make the car look wider and the bigger air inlets down here are supposed to show now a turbo is working here. By factory settings, the Porsche 718, regardless if we are talking about the Boxster or the Cayman, is uh, shipped with beak xenon headlights. As an option, you get the Porsche dynamic light system or full LED headlights. Uh, so here we got the full LED headlights. As you can see, pretty neat, at least in my taste, it's all black inside, while the turning signal is down here. Well, my favorite Porsche color is called Lava Orange. Um, however, they didn't have the car in my favorite setup in this color available, so we chose Racing Yellow. It's one of 14 colors you can choose from, and for Racing Yellow, red, white and black, you don't have to pay extra even. Uh, the new uh, Porsche Cayman comes with new fenders or wheel arches and uh, the side skirt are designed in a new way as well. And here in the end takes we have two, uh, yeah, whatever, lamellas. Um, you can order the Porsche Cayman with three different suspensions. So we got the regular one, then we got the Porsche Active Suspension Management, PASM, that has, um, that is, 
that is 10 millimeters lower on the ground and then they offer even a sport Porsche active suspension management which is 20 centimeters lower to the ground. By factory setting our car should stand on 18 inch alloys while the Cayman S stands on 19 inch alloys we got optional uh, 20 inch alloys uh, turbo alloys even. Uh, with the braking system, they changed a little bit. You got an upgrade with the third product generation. So the Cayman from the third generation got the braking system from the Cayman S from the second generation, while the Cayman S from the third generation got the uh, braking system from the Porsche 911. So in the front, we got uh, disc brakes. Um, of the size uh, with a diameter of 330 uh, millimeters in the front and in the rear 299 millimeters while the brake calipers are in black here with the Cayman S and we got uh, four braking pistons that help you slow down the car. Well, the changes on the rear are quite significant, I guess. Uh, first of all, we got this new uh, line here all in black which is pretty neat especially with the yellow black contrast with the Porsche lettering on it. Besides that between the reflectors we got a new shadow line as well. The big difference between the Porsche Cayman and the Porsche Cayman S from the rear view is the exit pipe system. While the uh, Cayman S comes with two round exit pipes the Cayman actually just comes with one oval exit pipe but we got the optional sport exit system here so you can't really see it's a Cayman without the S. Besides that uh, we got new rear lights, uh, full LED and what I like about them is you got four uh, separate spots that show the braking lights while the third braking light by the way is up on the roof. Besides that, we got a spoiler here that uh, comes out if you drive faster than a certain speed automatically or you got the poser button and you can pull it out whenever you want to just push in the button. Well, the interior from the Cayman is pretty much like uh, the one from the Boxster. However, I will present it to you. What I like, you pull the handle to the top, which makes sense since the car is so low. The doors open at around about 75 degree angle. We got frameless windows here. It's a coupe. And uh, we have a Cayman, a short Cayman door sill panel. All right, it's a sporty car that is low on the street, a low car. And so it goes down, you know, a little bit. And getting in, I would love to say it's easy, but it's not. I'm 45 years old now. I feel a little bit too old for this car already. Well, getting in, not driving. But even if the doors open all the way, you can easily close it. Welcome inside the uh, Porsche 718 Cayman. Well, that's how it looks like. It's always hard to tell. Even so, I got a complete option list of this car. It's too much to memorize. And uh, especially you have so many options you can choose just for the interior. That's wicked. Uh, so I just pretend like I'm all uh, not informed and I just, you know, touch everything like the leather we have on the dashboard. And not only on the dashboard, even the lid of the glove compartment is covered with leather. Same with the doors, the door panels, all leather. So you really have to look close to find something that is hard plastic, like this parts here. But what do you want? Leather here doesn't make sense. Um, so even though the A pillar and the ceiling is covered with Alcantara and it feels good. It feels good to sit inside this car, it gives you a premium appeal, a good feeling and uh, well you paid for it so you want to have a nice car I guess. Um, Talking about ergonomy, the display is facing the rear and we don't have even passengers in the rear so both the passenger and the driver can uh, read it easily. I always like it if it's a little bit more driver oriented but that's the way it is. Uh, we have this whole part here that is uh, for the infotainment system and then we got a part here full of buttons for the air condition and seats. 
Down here we got buttons for driving, sort of, you know, suspension or the exit system. Uh, we got four sticks on the steering wheel, so turning signal on the left as usual. Um, down here a uh, uh, stick for the cruise control, up here the windscreen wiper and on the right down here um, the stick for changing the board computer. On the left side next to the key we got the light. And so it's a whole bunch of buttons and when you first drive a Porsche it's like how do I use all this? But if you drive it a little bit more often you're fine with it. You reach everything and you know where the, the buttons are that you need to reach. And maybe you're more generous uh, with the Porsche than with any other car. At least maybe it's just for me. Okay, uh, concerning the space, uh, the seat is lowered to the very lowest position. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". I can put a fist between my head and the ceiling, so enough headspace here. Um, you sit really tight in here. Between the seats at the largest point you have this wide space. But we've driven here with two grown-ups and it's not that I feel tightened up in terms of with the passenger but inside the car it really feels like you're melting inside the car because it's just you know everything is focused on driving and i like it it's really cool yeah that's pretty much it music is still on so i will start with a normal routine uh, you cannot adjust the height of the safety belts at least they match the paint of the car here yellow seat belts and that's the size you have, so pretty long seat belts, I might say. Uh, the seats we got in here, sports seats uh, that you can adjust electrically all the way forward, backward. You can um, extend the seat cushion even. You have an electric, oh, electric lumbar support. And uh, you can adjust the... Uh, um, side support not only the, on the back side but on the cushion as well on the seat cushion yeah besides that you can heat them up at least our seats here uh, in three intensities and uh, even the seats are perforated it's not an option here in our car to have a uh, climate seat all right uh, the steering wheel when I was re reviewing the, um, the Boxster, I was thinking that the new uh, steering wheel, the multifunctional steering wheel is just, you know, that's the, the steering wheel they sell now because you didn't have the sticks down here. Uh, but as I see now, it's just an option to have this. I would rather go for the multifunctional steering wheel. Even so, I like this handle down here. It's easier to reach with your thumb. Still we got this um, drive mode uh, switch down here, a little wheel we can uh, rotate to choose the different driving modes and a push button in between to put the car in sport response mode so it's really everything's activated to go on fast forward and quick. We got, um, well first of all it's covered with leather but Hey, that's that's I think that's pretty clear. Uh, we got uh, shifting pedals here made out of metal. They're pretty long but pretty short as well but they have a little dent in here so you can put your fingers in there and don't lose grip. Yeah. Okay oh yeah and you can adjust it oh I'm sorry you can adjust it electrically it's all out already so that's the lowest point that's the highest point no, that's the highest point and now see in a while I go for a nap. Uh, that's all the way in and in and down. Well, the acceleration of the steering wheel is not really Porsche-like, I might say. Oh yeah, so that's the way I drive. Done. Okay, uh, looking in the mirrors, we got uh, pretty tiny mirrors, pretty sporty mirrors, of course, you know, on both sides, uh, but they're fine enough to see the traffic behind you, 
plus you see the fender on the rear which gives you a sporty feeling even if you look in the mirror uh, same with the uh, um, inner mirror it's pretty tiny you have to move your head just a little bit to see the whole window but the window is pretty small anyway with all the three mirrors i mean you're driving a porsche how many cars are coming from behind well in different countries where you all have the same speed maybe more but that's fine for keeping the traffic inside um, Yeah, turning my head around my shoulder. So here it's really fine. We have a little triangle window, so no blind spot at all. On the other side around, A pillar is fine. B pillar, or yeah, well, let's say this is the B pillar and the C pillar between this little window you hardly see, at least if the seat is to the very uh, back position. And so the C pillar itself is pretty huge, so there is a blind spot for sure. Make sure you check your window as well. Yeah, and we don't have a rear camera, I think. I'm gonna check it in a second. Okay, let's start the engine. The key is, uh, of course, on the left side. It's a Porsche, and now start it up. So, in the center, we got the rev meter. Going to 8,000 RPM with the rate range starting at 7,250, I guess, or 7,500, I don't know. Uh, down here you see the digital speed, up there is the current gear you're in, you know this little display you don't see right now. See the different drive modes, okay, now you see it, first gear and so on, now back to park. Um, besides that, that's just the main instrument and I think I never really checked the speedometer driving in Porsche. I always go with the digital speed down here. <coughs> so on the right, uh, left side we got a speedometer going up to 280 kilometers per hour while the car drives 275 so you don't have much reserve in here. Down there you got the current mileage, overall mileage and the trip mileage. So, more interesting on the right side, this is the board computer and you switch it, you can, you know, push up and down here to go through the different menus and then push and pull to do something in between the menu. Okay, let's start. This is a navigation screen or one of the navigation screen where you have always a current map and uh, what I like is you can have this like really uh, close to you or zoomed in. You can even change the zoom level and the other way like the total where you're driving so you have everything neatly inside. Another navigation screen. That's a trip computer and you can, you know, choose between the different setups you have here. Oops. Then we got uh, the pressure of the tires, the chrono watch, the g-force meter. By the way, if you push, you see the maximum values reached. Uh, well, some values, you know, the pressure of the turbo and some um, temperatures. Can even do some settings here. The audio system, phone, and we're back. On the other side we got the infotainment system display with a narrowing sensor so you see the whole uh, map first and if you put your hand towards it you see the buttons coming up. It's a touch screen of course but let's start down here we got the push buttons tuner where we have the icons of the radio stations and we can swipe through. I'm just going through here a little real quick. That's a jukebox. Again, you can slide, stop, and if your fingers work, you can push. That's the way it looks like. You can choose different sources, of course. The phone, the phone is hooked up, uh, the iPhone. Navigation, put in a navigation uh, destination. That's the map. Pretty quick as well. We got a screen for the car where I just changed the language. Again, that's a board computer. 
stopwatch, assist systems and settings. And if you go to home, to the home button, we have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto where we can hook up our uh, smartphone. And for, for most of the screens we got options as well. Yeah, and uh, I can only tell you that you can easily read uh, this uh, screens during daytime. So I cannot tell you anything about the ambient light because I just drove the car during daylight, uh, so no clue about this. But I can tell you uh, it has a horn and I can check it. But before that, with a uh, warning indicator switch, you know, it should be here, but they put it down here on the side, little button. Well, if you know where it is, you know, that's okay, I guess, but it could be put to a more obvious position, I guess. So, last but not least, the horn, that's how it sounds like. All right, and on we go with the compartment check. I show you all the compartments in the car. We start out in the door panels. We have two uh, compartments here. First of all, a little lid that I can pull, and here's some storage where at least this uh, little bottle fits in, but even a half a liter bottle fits in this thing, and you can, you know, put it close it to and in the front some more space for a wallet or key or whatever so nothing here here right under the display we have three slots two SD card slots and a SIM card slot as well so nothing here next one is right here there's the ashtray illuminated by the way <coughs> with a cigarette lighter if you don't choose the ashtray you have at least a 12 volt outlet here the armrest uh, you can pull up and uh, it's a phone box so your signal of your smartphone or your phone will be amplified. Uh, we have a USB port here and an iPhone is sitting in here. Besides that it's anti-slip surface but not very much space in here. Uh, like we know it from the 911 as well but the Cayman had it before we got two cup holders hiding here under the silver line and if you take this little bottle it perfectly sits in here if you have larger bottles they kind of shake around especially if you're driving fast then you better watch your bottle uh, what i like about this here you got the air outlet and if you pull it down you can even cool your bottle while driving i think that's pretty neat well, I think it's neat because it's my idea, but you know, never mind. Just forget it. Forget it. All right. So we got a gloves compartment. Here we find the AUX in and another USB port. We got space for the board material and even some Porsche warning vest. And uh, there's a pen holder. It's illuminated, but that's already it. Uh, in the sun visors on both sides we have makeup mirrors, they're not illuminated in our car and uh, next to the mirror is a little clip for tickets. We got a reading light for the driver and the passenger and uh, both together is probably the entry light. We have no handles but um, one more thing at least, if we pull forward the seats on both sides we have a little hook on the headdress, on the rear of the headdress, where we can, you know, pull a, uh, put a jacket. And just to entertain you, I would like to show you how it is when the old guy gets out of the car, you know, one hand on the side, pushing myself up, and here I am. I really love Sweden, and if you haven't been here so far, just come and visit. It's really a beautiful country, and especially in summertime, it even gets warm. It gets so warm, I had the key laying on the dashboard, and when I grabbed it to show it to you, I burned my fingers. No, it's really nice and pleasant here. <laughs> okay, the Porsche key. It's a usual Porsche sculpture. I wouldn't call it key, I would say sculpture. With a Porsche logo and four push buttons. So lock the car, unlock the car, and unlock the trunks. The trunks. 
with S because we got a trunk in the front as well as in the rear. And we can either open it over the key or we have two push buttons here next to the driver's seat to uh, release the lids of the trunk. So let's start here at the front. Uh, under the hood or lid in this case, uh, we have space for 150 liters or five cubic feet. Numbers, you know, numbers don't say anything. What is probably more reasonable is to show you that I can put two carry-on luggage pieces in here with ease and I even have space for a little bit more stuff like a jacket or two, whatever. So let's have a closer look here at the trunk. We got a little light on the left side. Down there is the first aid kit and here's the warning triangle. And that's already all about the trunk. Besides that, if you want to refill the liquid for the windscreen, it's under the lid as well. Okay, and now let's measure the whole thing. In the front, we have a width of uh, 64 centimeters, round about 25 inches. In the rear, it's a little bit wider, 75 centimeters, so 29.5 inches. We have a depth of uh, 43 centimeters, almost 17 inches. And it's going down here. 45 uh, centimeters, so 17.75 uh, inches. If you lift the stuff from the ground, you have to lift it up uh, 65 centimeters, so 25.5 inches. And then it goes down a little bit more than I just told you. Um, 47 centimeters so 18.5 inches so in the rear we got a um, trunk as well here we got a storage uh, volume of 275 liters or 10 cubic feet and uh, one of my carry-on luggage pieces fits in here as well and you might want to wait a minute 150 liters in the front so five cubic feet 275 liters in the rear. In the front you get two luggage pieces, in the rear just one. Well, I'll show you in a minute. By the way, 275 liters equals 10 cubic feet. So altogether we have a volume here of 425 liters or 15 cubic feet. Okay, so um, we got two parts of the trunk. Actually, this part is where my suitcase was laying and then we got an upper part as well that they count as trunk. <laughs> well, okay, so let's look inside. First of all, that's a regular boot, trunk, whatever. We got four rings here to tie up stuff and that's already it. <laughs> and on the upper part, we got four rings as well. And we have two compartments on each side with a slider here that you can either fill from the trunk or from the doors. And they're pretty deep, as you can see. And I wouldn't put any uh, small items in there. We got two lights here, here and here to illuminate this part, as well as one LED light that is meant to illuminate the other trunk. By the way, up here a handle as well. And we can remove this privacy blind if we want to. Besides that, here we got coolant water. And on the other side we can fill in oil. And that's already it. But of course I will measure everything for you as well. So the square you got in the uh, lower boot here, you have uh, 60, um, 60 series centimeters, so almost 25 inches, times uh, 40 centimeters, so almost 16 inches, times 22 centimeters, so almost 9 inches in the lower part, and in the upper part, you have a depth of uh, 48 centimeters, almost 19 inches, a width of 87 centimeters, so 34 inches, 
and a height of uh, 14 centimeters, so 5.5 inches. You can load up to 320 kilograms or 705 pounds inside the Porsche Cayman. Uh, you are not supposed to install a hook. How should you with a, a central exit pipe system? And I don't know if you can put anything on the roof that didn't give me any number. <laughs> Right guys, I'm sitting in the Cayman now, uh, heading uh, or driving around here and you gotta know we are in Sweden, speed limits on most country roads is 70, while on the highway it's 100 or 110, this uh, highway right here has a speed limit of 100, so I cannot really, you know, go as I want to, but still I can give you some, some insights on my driving impressions. Um, First of all, we got different driving programs. So we got normal, sport, sport plus, and individual. Uh, individual you can set up over the board computer, and most likely it's just you decide you want to go the en engine and uh, transmission wise in normal, sport, or sport plus. Enable or disable start stop, enable or disable the flaps and the exit uh, pipe system and puts the uh, uh, Porsche Active Suspension Management in sport or leave it in normal. So uh, ahead of me is uh, my camera guy, Alex. And he's guiding me home, sort of, so I can pay attention to talking to you instead of just uh, driving uh, according to the navigation system. So, um, first of all, acceleration, power and all this. Uh, I've driven the Boxster in the S version and now I'm driving the Cayman without the S. And yes, I think you do feel a significant change. The S version does have more power and you feel it, but is it worth 12,500 euros? I don't know. I would be fine with a regular version. Um, Sound-wise, uh, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's a two-liter four-cylinder. You know, it's not a Porsche, it's a Golf. Or, you know, Ford Focus or whatever. And I'm saying, well, yeah, at least you have a boxer engine. And the sound is a little bit different, at least, from the regular um, inline four-cylinder. So, um, if I go in Sport Plus now, you know, Sport Exit System and shift back. It's not too bad, I guess, you know. Yeah. It does sound quite unique, at least, I think. So, yes, a six-cylinder is a different sound, but I think it's fine. It's got to be fine. Okay, uh, back to to uh, normal suspension wise so we got two settings normal and sport in normal the car is almost comfortable which is neat for such a sporty car um, in sport plus the suspension gets a lot stiffer and helps you you know cornering drive more sporty have a little bit more fun 70 on a highway or something i don't know it's just wicked here and um, so I think they made a really neat spreading between comfort and sport setup for the suspension. The steering is, um, has just one setting, that's the way you buy the car. And I'm driving too fast right now to show you, but it's really, really um, catchy. The steering is very direct, gives you a perfect feedback. So if you're on the street, um, you get a good feeling uh, for the car and a good response in the corners so you know what you're doing and you can find out where the, the sweet spot is and where the car is about to lose grip and all that. I like the steering, it's pretty awesome. Um, 
told you about the brakes. We got a brake upgrade with a new product generation, which is neat, awesome, fine. And um, the brakes are fine, you know. You can touch the br uh, brake pedal tenderly and it slows down softly. And uh, you can hit the brakes real hard and it, you know, slows down the car just the way you want it. And you need this. I've seen the other guys drive on track and none of the brakes seem to uh, have some smoke on it or anything. So I think they're even stable and they work for a certain time pretty neatly. So you can probably even use them on track without buying the pretty expensive uh, carbon ceramic brake system. All right, guys, now I'm sitting in a red Porsche because manual. Okay. Ooh. Easy, guys, easy, guys. Uh, well, I just wanted to show you the manual transmission at least. I just drove it now for a few kilometers to get a feeling and uh, that I can report you at least that the shifting weights are really short. Look at this. Um, to shift the weight, to put your hand from the steering wheel down to the stick shift, that's really short so you don't lose much time, you know. You always can keep your hands on the steering wheel, just shift real quick and then you're back. It's very precise, a lot of fun to shift with and if you're on a certain budget and you don't know, you know, PDK or manual, the manual is as much fun. I'm just a lazy guy. I like the, uh, the PDK because it shifts for yourself and even if you drive sporty, you know, it supports you so much. Uh, but I know real guys do it manual, right? <laughs> yeah. And it works fine, I like it. Shifts good. Oh, by the way, uh, here I got the multifunctional steering wheel now. With a little bolts here that I can scoot. And I think that's so much neater than um, having the sticks down here. Okay, a few words to the assist system. So, well, we hardly have any. We have a cruise control, which is not adaptive. Uh, we have a blind spot warner. It's right here in the triangle, three stripes that will illuminate once there's a car in your uh, blind spot. We have a traffic sign recognition, which worked even here in Sweden. And that's it. In the box that we had the Boommaster sound system. Here we got the Bose sound system. I think there's 1,000 euro in between, and you hear it as well. I mean, the Bose is fine, and I would even say it's a pretty good system, but the Boommaster is much better. If you want to buy a Cayman and you're not sure, you know, which options to choose, once, uh, since you're on a certain budget, well, you will be fine with the Bose. If money doesn't matter to you, just go for the Boommaster because it's a little bit more crisp, clear, and all that. Well, that's it. That's it from my review of the Porsche 718 Cayman without the S. First of all, fuel consumption. Porsche claims, well, you know, the NEFS set whatever cycle, you know, if you drive carefully, you can reach 100 kilometers with just 6.9 liters of fuel. I say yes, but that has nothing to do with driving this car. So uh, we drove around about 100 km and had a fuel consumption of 13.9 uh, liters, which is almost, we almost doubled the value. Uh, but I have to say, whenever we drive and we don't have too much time driving, you know, you accelerate and you push on the brake. You want to feel the car, you know, and try to do as much as you can in the little time you have. So fuel consumption grows and grows and gets higher. So I think you can drive this car regularly with 10 liters and even sporty, not like on track, but sporty with 12, uh, yeah, 12 liters. Okay, then we always got the three points. Uh, usage as a daily driver. We got two trunks, two seats. Fine, right? It's a sporty car. No, really. You get your carry-on luggage in the first one and everything else in the rear, so you're fine. Yes, you can even get a, a 
beer case in there. So actually there's nothing to complain except you just have two seats. Um, driving comfort. I'm quite impressed. I mean, this is a sports car. And if you drive the car in uh, regular mode, um, it is even comfortable. I mean, for a sports car, just, you know, keep it in relation. It's not like an S-Class, you know, with air suspension. But for a sports car in regular mode, it's really comfortable. Especially the seats, they help a lot, you know, a lot of side support on one hand, but you can, you know, open them all up and they're just comfortable. Uh, on the other hand, in Sport Plus, as the seats, you know, like really tighten up, it's a real sporty car and I like the spreading they did. They did a really awesome job. Uh, last but not least, driving fun. What should I say? I'm in Sweden, you know, they, they don't, they're not helping me. They're not helping me driving uh, the way I want to, but uh, at the small parts where I could drive a little bit faster, you know, I had some cool corners, uh, I got a glimpse of what this car is able to do, and I was smiling big time whenever I felt it. So yes, you can have a hell lot of fun with this car, even with the one without S. I mean, yes, uh, we drove the Boxster as the S version, and I think I can, you know, compare them a little bit at least. And uh, yes, the S version has a lot of more, has a bit more power, especially with the acceleration, feels a bit quicker. But just as a fun car, you know, for driving fun, this was just fine. Don't even think about the S version. Unless you have money, <laughs> then just go for it. Okay, uh, that's it. That's it from my side. If you have any questions, put them below in the comment field. If you have any remarks, feel free. If you don't like me even, you know, let me know, please. That's why the comment field is there. If you, by any chance, enjoyed this review, please give me a thumb up because it motivates me. If you really want to help me uh, push this clip on your social networks, you know, like Facebook or Twitter or Google+, Plus, or put them in your private playlist on YouTube, that helps me as well. If you say, well, this guy is so awesome, I need more, 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 you can even support me with money over Patreon and Tippy. See in the description or the description of this video, you find the links. That's it. I call myself Mr. Z because my English sucks. And now I say so long and goodbye. Porsche introduced the Porsche Boxster. They waited over 10 years. Uh, yeah, fuck. No one yeah, and does. By the way, I'm in Sweden today, in Malmö, uh, next to the airport right now at the Sturup Raceway. <laughs> Sturup Raceway, a little racetrack where we can drive the bog. Fuck! And um, so. Bin ich voll raus. Scheiße.